See if I can get some light. Perfect. So our pin is right there, which you can't see. So you can't really see it still, but our pin is down inside of there. I thought it was going to be a uh, frenary type. I was wrong. I know, weird. All right, make life easy. I'm going to pull this VRO pump off. It's going to come off anyway. So if you see how I do that, I just break zip ties off and away I go. I got two zip ties and an old hose clamp on this little assembly. Something tells me uh, not all that was Evan Rude's doing. And it looks like I'm struggling. Nothing new, right? That's like the beefiest hose clamp ever. There we go. That one fell off on its own. So what I do here, when I'm trying to get it off, I'm going to pitch the hose clamp and just twist it. That'll kind of break its little seal it's in. And that'll let me get it off pretty easily. Usually that works out quite well for larger hoses too. Now, you're destroying the hoses doing this. However, these hoses are probably original anyway, meaning they're junk and need to go. So I'm perfectly fine with doing this. If this engine was going back together, or should this be a customer's, none of this would be happening. Although, even in a customer's, you just replace the fuel lines. <coughs> Chances are it needed to happen anyway. down there as you can see that's really well attached now there's another connector right here that's for the VRO slide that guy off I like to put the clips back on the plugs helps find where they go and it comes right off hopefully you saw how I did that but what I do is I rotate and as I pull it comes right apart Back up a little here. Bring your camera up to a normal level. And there's our VRO pump. Nice and removed. Set that $500 beauty off to the side. These things are expensive. All right. A series of adapters that hopefully will get in there and get that off. This is going to look funky, but it works. Tape. Turn that guide her in where she needs to go. I gotta shift it forward. I don't know if you saw that move, but it should have moved the position of that bolt away from this little uh, barb splice. And actually, all it did was make it worse. All right, back to going the other way. Originally, it was in neutral. I put it in forward. Now it's in a reverse. I think it is anyway. And it's coming right out. So, as you can probably guess, I didn't need to remove the uh, carburetors, just the VRO pump. Oh well, they would have came off on their own eventually anyway. Alright, pin is out. 
By out, I mean it's still sitting in there, but it ain't doing nothing. All right, part one is done. Let's get this motor back up. Get that little, uh... Let me get that light off too. All right, it looks like our friendly prior owner did a custom job on that bolt. I don't think this is the type of bolt supposed to be in there. And I don't even know if it's an American Standard size. But it's coming right out, so no harm, no foul, right? All right, looks like what happened. Bolt broke off inside of there. So what they did was drilled it out and threaded it for a smaller size, which is this little guy. So that's a uh, that's a bunch of crap. All right, well, a little hard to fix that with the propeller shaft in there. So I guess I'll be making a video of how to take the propeller shaft out. How to get that fixed. Yeah, good times. Well, anywho, back to taking stuff apart. Alright, I'm too old for this. First bolt came out the rest of the way without issue. One right next to it, not so much. All right. This one holds in the anode. No need to get that out. You can also see these four holes here. That's from where a whale's tail or one of those hydro fins thing was installed. I personally think they're dumb. I don't like drilling holes in anything that's not supposed to have a hole in it. So if you notice, drilled a hole in their trim tab there to get that thing installed. Kind of, I don't know, kind of dumb to me. But everybody does it. Those snake oil things, I think. All right, next. Let's get the bottom bolts out, two on each side. Now, if you notice, this is kind of rocking. It's because the engine's at a full tilt and it's balancing on my desk. It's not bending the desk, it's just balancing. So, lower it down a little. And apparently the engine's still moving. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, that's a good camera placement, right? Look at that. All right, I used a 916 wrench to break them all loose already. Now I'm going to use my little speed wrench there to get them the rest of the way. In case you're wondering what I'm doing, put my finger on the back to hold it as I ratchet it because the bolts, some kind, it's kind of going back and forth there without ratcheting. So you put your finger on it and you can ratchet it the whole way out. I do that for sockets too, just pinch the sockets. See, someone put anti seize on these bolts. Did they forget to do it to that one? I don't know. I don't know. Stop complaining.
All right, that side's out. And on the floor, as you heard. Now we'll do this side. You can probably kind of see it's already starting to separate. So that's a uh, kind of a good sign. You know it's not going to give you problems. And you also know it's probably going to drop on your foot now. So that's handy. So it's ready to come out. Not going to stick on me at all. So I'm going to raise the motor back up. What's that going to do is keep it from falling and breaking my toe. Let's see if I can back up a little here so you can kind of see the struggles I go through. I'm kidding, there's no struggle. Just these things are heavy. And I'm a weak little old man. Bolts out. And off comes the lower. Now, go ahead and tilt the motor back down to get a view of my workshop as I do it. Okay, well, that's all for tonight. I'm tired. Uh, tomorrow, I'll take the uh, what's left of the uh, lower cover off there, pull the power head bolts off, and lift the power head out. 